In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add an image to a question slide. I'm Paul Wilson. About once a week, I create new tutorials on my YouTube channel, specifically about e-learning and more specifically about Adobe Captivate. So if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe and certainly share these videos with all your e-learning and Adobe Captivate friends. Today's video is going to address a comment that I've seen a bunch of times over the last few months on the forums and even in the comments of my YouTube channel. And that's the limitation of being able to add additional content to your question slides. It seems that a lot of you want to add images to your question slide. Perhaps you want to ask your learners, you know, hey, what is this? Or please identify the item in the image, that sort of thing. So today's tutorial is going to be about that. It's a little bit longer tutorial than maybe you're used to, but this is quite an advanced interaction. I'm going to show you how to build a custom question slide where you can include an image block just like you can with any other slide. Okay, the first thing that we, we're going to need for our question slide with an image on it is a couple of paragraph blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and add text blocks and we're going to choose paragraph here. You can press control D just to duplicate that, save yourself a step there. Uh, we also need that image, of course. So let's go ahead and select add media blocks and choose image. And we're going to need a couple of interactive blocks as well. First one will be a radio group. We'll select that. And then lastly, we're going to need a button block as well. So let's go through and configure these. The first block is going to be our feedback caption. We don't need a title, so I'm going to get rid of that. But I am going to add a card so it kind of looks like a pop-up or something to that effect there. Now this is going to be a multi-state object. The default state will never actually be seen. I only want to have users look at my optional or custom states that we'll be adding there. So I'm just gonna add some plain old text here, default text, you know, in that default state there. And we're gonna go ahead, we need a total of four additional states. So I'm gonna click on add and we'll click on add again add once more and once again. So I've got my four states there. The first state will be labeled HDD. The second custom state will be RAM. And the third one will be CPU. And the last one, which will be our correct feedback, will be solid state drive or SSD. And I have this text already set up there. So let's go through and copy and paste what we need there. I'll go ahead and uh, for our hard disk drive, I'll just put that text in here. And for RAM, we'll do the same thing. CPU. And the last one, like I said, will be the correct answer. So we'll just copy that from my source document there and we're good to go. Next, we're going to start with knowledge check. So that's just going to be the title of this slide. And the question stem will be identify the following computer component. Now here's where we're going to display that image that the question slide is based on. So I'm going to click on the add image icon in the middle of this default image here. We're going to choose system because I already have this on my computer. I'll select system and navigate to where that image is here. We'll click on open and there's the solid state drive. Now with this particular block, I don't need a caption. I don't need a subtitle, so I will turn those components off. But I am going to resize this because I quite frankly don't need it to be that large. Now, of course, the image isn't really configured for this size block here. So I'm going to select the image and we're going to select edit image and make some different choices here. In this case, I'm going to choose fit so that it fits the image within the space that I've provided. Now, when you look at the preview here, it looks fine on desktop, 
not too bad on tablet, but it's quite frankly too small on mobile. We're going to change the responsive behavior from scaled to fixed height. I think that's going to work a lot better. And I'll click on save and that looks better there. You notice that my image has a background color that doesn't quite match my slide here. I'm going to click on the slide within my slide navigator here so that I can see my slide background. I'm going to click on the fill and select my eyedropper tool and select this color as my background for the whole slide. So it'll look a little bit more natural there. Next, let's work on the radio buttons here. I don't need a label for those, so I'm going to turn those off. However, I'm going to select the actual radio buttons themselves and go into settings and make sure that four radio buttons are available as this question requires four possible answers. Now let's move down to our button block here. The button is going to be for a submit button, but we're also going to need a second button to function as a next button, a next slide button. And we'll distribute these buttons uniformly. And I'll just change the label on that next button to actually read next. And so I think we're pretty much good to go here. One of the things that you can do, of course, is we can resize these blocks so that they fit the appropriate space that you're really looking for here. And I think that's pretty good. And when you look at it on tablet, looks good. And on mobile phone, looks good as well. The only thing I probably would change is maybe this title here. It's kind of large. So let, maybe let's choose something a little bit smaller, like maybe 36 point. And we can do that for the, the other responsive design layouts as well there. That looks better. Okay, now let's put in the radio button text, which I have over in another document here. I'll just, we'll paste that in like so. Next option is RAM module, CPU upgrade, and solid state drive there. You can change the font here as well. Let's choose something closer to what the rest of this slide probably looks like there. We can go with Arial, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, when learners arrive on this slide, we want to set it up, whether they're arriving for the first time or whether they've come back to the slide, uh, just to revisit this interaction here. So we're going to click on the interactions icon next to our properties inspector and uh, make sure that the slide itself is selected. We'll click on add an interaction and we'll choose timeline and slide enter. And we're going to hide a few things here. We're going to first of all hide the paragraph one content block there. We're also going to hide our next button so that the learner has to complete the interaction either for the first time or if they revisit the slide. We'll click next and done. And one of the things that we'll be doing in this interaction, once the learner gets the answer correct, we are going to disable the radio buttons and the submit button. So let's make sure that those are enabled. So we'll select um, the more section for actions and we'll choose enable and we'll choose our radio buttons as well as our submit button and press next. Click done and that takes care of the on interaction. A good best practice if you want actions or uh, multiple actions or interactions to perform almost simultaneously, you can select those and merge them together so that they happen very quickly when you arrive on the slide. The next part of this interaction we need to take care of is we want to take care of the selection process and uh, a few things that need to work here. Looks like I have a bit of a typo here. I'll just take care of that there. So when you select a radio button block like this, you can choose to run actions as a result of any selection being made or you can choose it specific to the selections that are available here. I'm gonna stick with selection of, and we're gonna start with hard disk drive. So if the user selects hard disk drive, we're going to do a couple of things. We're gonna hide our feedback block in the event that they've already made a selection and they're trying again. So let's choose hide. 
and we'll choose content section and choose paragraph block one. Click next and then done. We also wanna keep track of what the selection is that they've made. So we're gonna use a user variable for this. I'm gonna click on add new action. We're gonna click on more because this is one of the more advanced actions. And we're gonna scroll down until we find assign variable. Now, I haven't created this variable yet, but it's easy to do from this uh, panel right here. Click the plus icon and that opens the variable window and we can give our variable a name. Variable underscore one isn't very meaningful and you might forget what that's for. So I'm gonna choose radio underscore selection, but you can call it whatever you wish. This needs to be a string variable because I'm not gonna use numbers to keep track of uh, which answer has been selected and I need more than a true and false. So I'm gonna select string and I could optionally put a description here if I want, but I'm just going to click create for right now. Click outside the variables window to have it close. And we're going to run this action. And this action will be to assign a variable to radio selection. And we're going to say uh, a value of HDD for hard disk drive. We'll click done. The other thing I need to do is set the state of our feedback caption. Even though we won't be showing it right away, I want to take care of that during the selection process here. So I'm going to click on Add New Action, and we're going to choose Set State of our default text caption here, and we'll choose HDD, and that will provide the feedback for if that answer is chosen. Let's click Next and then done. And a good best practice when you've got multiple actions like this is to select the first one, hold down your shift key and select the last one, and then use the merge option to bring them all together so that they happen simultaneously. Next, let's do the same thing for RAM module. So first of all, we will hide our paragraph one block. and we will assign our variable radio selection with a value of RAM. Click Done, and then we will set the state for our text three object to be RAM, or the feedback for RAM. Press Next, and then Done. Now let's do CPU upgrade. So again, we're going to hide our content section for paragraph one. Next, done. We're going to assign our variable. A value of CPU and then done and we'll set the state of our feedback caption to match the feedback for CPU, and then next, and then done. One more to do, solid state drive. This is the correct answer now. Nothing really changes, but we are going to select that. We're still going to hide our paragraph block. We're going to assign our variable radio selection, a value of SSD, and then done. And lastly, we will set our state to the correct feedback that you see here. And we'll select SSD and next, and then done. So that takes care of the initial selection. Again, I'm just going to merge all of these actions to occur simultaneously. Once more, if you missed it, I'm holding down my shift key after selecting the first and then the last and then merging them together. So that takes care of the selection process. Next thing we need to do is take care of the submit button actions. So let's select submit 
And we're going to create a series of conditional actions. So in other words, if a certain is, uh, condition is met, we're going to then run a series of actions. So the first thing we need to do is set up our first condition. So let's click the plus icon next to condition. We're going to check the value of our variable radio selection. And if it is equal to a value of HDD, press save. We're going to show our content section, paragraph one. Click next and done. Okay, go back up to the top here and click add new action. We'll click new condition and we'll also check if the variable of our radio selection is equal to a value of RAM for RAM. Press save and if it is, we're going to also show our paragraph one. Click next and then done. We'll do this two more times, one for CPU and one for solid state drive. Let's do CPU first, add new action, click plus next to conditions. We'll check the value of our variable radio selection to see if it's equal to a value of CPU. And if it is, we're simply going to show our feedback block there. Done. Now this last one is for the correct answer, the solid state drive, it requires a few extra actions here. So pay close attention to this one here. Let's add new action. The condition that we're checking for is if our variable is uh, equal to the value SSD for solid state drive, press save. And we're gonna do a couple of things. We're first of all going to show our content section, paragraph one, click next, and then done. We're also going to show our next button because now you've successfully completed this interaction. In fact, I could have done that on the previous step to save some time, but that's okay. Click next and then done. So we're gonna show paragraph, show button. We're also going to disable. Now this is an advanced action. We need to go into the more list here and look for disable. There it is there. And we can choose the to disable the radio button block and of course the submit button. Here's an example of doing two things at once there. And we can click next and then done. And again, I can select the first of these actions, hold down my shift key, select the last of these actions, and we can merge them together so that they happen all at the same time. I think we're ready to test this out. So let's go ahead and do a preview. So well, here's our knowledge check, identifying the identify the following computer component. And you can see the image here. I'm going to go ahead and accidentally call it a hard disk drive and press submit. Incorrect. While you are close, technically the component on the screen is not a hard drive. So let's make another selection. Pay attention to what happens to the feedback caption when I make another choice. If I choose RAM module, that feedback caption goes away. And of course, then I can press submit and see unique feedback for RAM modules. Okay, clearly it's not that. I'm pretty sure it's a solid state drive. Caption goes away. Press submit. My caption is there. I can't make any changes anymore to my submit button or to my radio buttons but my next button is available and I can now move forward with the rest of my project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.